Let us pray. Lord, we are so excited to be in your house today to celebrate for the very first time in 2022 being in your house. The fact that we serve a risen Savior, that our Lord lives and is alive today, and we are thankful. Now, Lord, as we begin the year, let it be a, a year that brings you glory and honor, a year that we see more and more people come to know you as Savior and Lord. We see our church come together in a greater way. We see our nation begin healing, Father, and coming together, uh, one nation under God once again. Lord, we love you. We praise you this morning. Open our hearts and minds as we open your word. And all God's people sit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in your Bibles. Turn to the book of John, if you would. John chapter 1. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you. Glad you're out. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, we started out the new year right. Very excited. Uh, uh, we started out the new year almost. It was late this morning. We started out the new year with pink vanilla glazed donuts. Amen. Yeah, man. I was feeling a little peaking. My suit wasn't fitting quite tight enough, so I thought we'd just pack it on this morning. Amen. Boy, we had a good morning. We finally got to be with our grandchildren. And you'll never guess the gift I've got. It is called the Pastor Pulverizer 2000. <laughs> now, just in case you're in the back and you want to fall asleep, Understand, I can reach chair. <laughs> reach right back after Brian Campbell. So uh, if y'all think about this, now don't don't fall asleep on me. I'm gonna keep this right underneath here for the rest of the year. All right. So don't be out there fooling around on me. All right. So no sleeping in church in 2022. <laughs> Boy, I am excited to be here today. You know, the, the, the title of the message is Just Give Me Jesus. And, and, and as I begin to think about uh, what I could preach on for the very first Sunday and, and what I would like, how I would like to start the year, the reality of it is there's no greater thing than Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's where it should start. That's where it ends. And everything in the middle is just about Jesus. Now we're closing out. 2021's gone. You can't take it back. You can't redo it. It's gone. All right? So it's in the books. Now, we have a year ahead of us. So we can assess our, uh, our strong points. We can assess our victories. We can assess our uh, failures for 2021. But that's done. We're going to learn from it and move forward for 22. Amen? We're going to get moving forward. We need the church moving forward. We need to be excited. I know this is a hard time to get excited about with everything that's going around. Listen, remember, Jesus is greater than all these things. Amen? Don't forget that. Don't forget who your Lord is. So uh, we've got a ton of people who are sick. Now, if you uh, you probably heard that we had to, uh, we canceled our uh, our in person service Wednesday. Uh, I mean, we've got a lot of folks who are out sick, but listen, God's still in control. He's still healing folks. Our people are are, are faring very well against this thing. We just got to hang in there, Amen. Uh, and and we might as well get used to it. I think this is how it's going to be for a little while. All right. Uh, we, you remember back when, when it started, the pandemic, we're going to shut everything down for two weeks. <laughs> two years ago. Alright, so listen, it's alright. Listen, we have, God has proven to us that He can flourish in the middle of a pandemic. Amen? He's proven to us that He will sustain us and keep us and He will move us forward. And this is important. We must have faith and not fear in our Jesus. Now I can tell by the way you were singing this morning, y'all been out partying a little too much for the new year. <laughs> felt, like, felt like you was dragging a little bit, so we need to, don't make me get out the pulverizer, right? So we got to get it going a little bit this morning. We got to understand that we're still living on the victory side of everything. And it's all right. We can live on this side of victory, even in this pandemic. Listen, we're going to start where it all began, and that is in with creation. So let's go ahead and take it. Well, no, hang on a minute. I get all excited. 
and want to jump right to it. All right, I got to introduce this thing just a minute. All right, so God sent His Son to the earth, and we're we're we're, we're celebrating. Just got through celebrating Christ's birth and Christmas, and and we're moving into a brand new year with that coming with Jesus coming to the earth. Let me see. There we go. With Jesus coming to the earth. He fulfilled in his 33 years over 300 prophecies. Now there's, I mean, it, the number goes way, way up. But there were eight prophecies that were specific to the birth of Jesus. Eight of them. Now there's, again, I'm going to focus on just, uh, I have those the, the list there. But, and with those eight prophecies, let's go to statistics. And I like stats. I like hitting the numbers. I like that. So if the chances of any man or woman alive fulfilling all eight prophecies is one to the uh, one and ten to the seventeenth power. All right. So that's that number that right below it. So it's like a gazillion. I think that's the technical term. All right. So. If y'all need to use that, you can write that down. The bazillion or something like that. I'm not real sure what 17 zeros. It's a lot more than we'll ever make in our lifetimes. All right? So let's put it that's right. You got to be a demo. Never mind. I'm not going to start there. See? Look, God's already given me a better filter for 2022. All right. So, so, so 17 zeros. Now let's put that into practical use because I like to be able to kind of relate that. So if we had a silver dollar for the, the, the one to the tenth power with 17 zeros, if we had a silver dollar for every one of those, it would cover the entire state of Texas two feet deep with silver dollars. Now, the chances of one man fulfilling all eight prophecies would be just the chance that you would take one of those silver dollars paint it red, go anywhere within the state of Texas, bury it, blindfold somebody, and they could go anywhere they wanted to go and to reach in and pull out that red silver dollar. That was the chances of Jesus fulfilling just the eight prophecies about His birth. Just the specific ones. But He didn't just fulfill those eight. He fulfilled 300. Right. See, that's our Jesus. And that's what we need moving into 22. That's what we need for our nation. That's what we need for our lives. So in John chapter 1 and verse 1, we'll begin there and, and read the first four and then we'll skip over. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him... Uh, not, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Now skip down to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came to His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born, uh, were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See, this is our Jesus. This is the one that is, that is greater than all. This is the one that died upon the cross for your sin and my sin. Uh, Anne Graham Lotz, Billy Graham's granddaughter, or Billy Graham's daughter, she entitled, she wrote a book. I've not read the book, but I thought I loved the name of it, and it kind of got me to this. And it said, Just Give Me Jesus. That's the name of it. And a statement she made is, with God's unlimited power, He not only created all things, but even today He sustains all things by the powerful Word. Listen, who do you know that does not believe in God? We probably all know somebody. Think about that person for a moment. We want to focus on that person for a moment. I want to give you a few things to think about. 
just in our uh, atmosphere or in our galaxy, let's think about that. The sun, our planet is 93 million miles away from the sun. Give or take, don't listen. I'm, you know, I'll just grab some statistics and things. But I want you to hear and think about it for a minute. It's the whole in, entire picture that I want you to think about. <clears throat> if we were much closer, we'd just burn up. If we were any farther, it'd just be a big iceberg. It was perfect. All right? So, the, the, if you took the Earth, or planets the size of the Earth, it would take 1.2 million planets the size of the Earth to fill up the sun. And that would still leave room for 4.3 million of our moons. That's the size that we're looking at. Let's keep on moving. Our sun is the next star closest to our planet. The one after the sun is four times larger than our sun. Estimated billions of stars in just our galaxy. And guess what? They're getting ready to, to build another telescope or they're going to put this thing up into, uh, into orbit where they can see beyond our galaxy. I'm excited, all right? Because we serve a mighty God and they're getting ready to show us just how great He is. We're going to see more and more of what God has for us. So uh, our planet tilts on a 23 degree axis and it gives us four seasons. If it would tilt any other a uh, angle, we would have a mass continents of ice. The moon is the exact distance from our planet to give us two tides every day. If it were any greater or lesser, the earth would be completely flooded. The ocean floor is at the perfect depth the perfect depth to give us the amount of oxygen we absolutely need. If it were any deeper, the air we would breathe would be poisonous. That's our Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's all Him. Amen. Giving glory this morning. We should, we should be excited about it. The atmosphere is exactly the density to keep the meteors and other things from hitting our planet. Listen, everything has been made and kept in perfect order by our Almighty God. He keeps the earth spinning. He keeps the other planets from spinning out of control and stars falling from the sky who keeps the people upright on the earth. And where did gravity come? We talk about gravity. God made gravity, amen. All of these things were created in perfection. The air that we breathe, the water we drink, the land, everything in perfect perfection. It didn't come from Mother Nature. It came from God Almighty. Amen. It came from the God of the Bible. And it makes perfect sense. I've said so many times it is so hard for me to even fathom the fact that somebody would believe that at one point we were just a tadpole that ran out and grew legs and arms and at some point at that tadpole morphed into a monkey and lost its tail and stood upright and began to think for itself. That's... Alright, I'll take stupid for $800. That's what that reminds me of. That should be a category. Oh, on what's that? Trevex show or... Jeopardy. He's not even alive, is he? No. Sorry, I didn't mean to. If any of you is here, like, I, I'm, I just don't. It just come to me that he died. Sorry. So, we'll not go to Alex Trebek. I guess that would be alright, wouldn't it? So, the answer is there is a perfect designer creator. That makes sense. A big bang and it just all happened? That doesn't make any sense. Alright? That's crazy. But we have the perfect uh, explanation and it's the grand creator. It is God Almighty. There's nothing beyond His ability. There's nothing, no problem that He can't solve, no marriage He can't reconcile. There is no, uh, there is no uh, sickness that He cannot heal. There's no guilty conscience that He cannot cleanse. There's no sin that He cannot give it. He is bigger than family. Uh, he's bigger than, than your business. He is bigger than the budget that you have to stretch. He's bigger than another mouth to feed. He's bigger than any and all of our problems put together. He can handle it. Just give us Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's all we need for 22. Our focus 
is on Him. It should stay on Him. If we'll stay focused on Jesus, He'll take care of growing the ministry. He'll take care of building the buildings. He'll take care of us moving forward to be the light in the community that we want to be. But our focus has got to be on Jesus. Amen. That's right. And that's all. Our church needs to regain a greater a focus. He's more powerful than your boss and, and your job. He's more powerful than any habits that you have to break. He is more powerful than, than the prodigal children that we, uh, that we were and are. He's more powerful than any addiction. He can overcome these things. We just have to get to the point where we're saying in everyday life, just give me Jesus. See, it's so important for you and I to be submissive to the will of God. Be submissive to the wants of our God. To the service of our God. Now, I read a story this week. It's kind of showed me and reminded me of how great our God, God is. man was driving down the road as many years ago. His car began to, to, to mess up. It was coughing and wheezing. You know, and quick, done. Right? Pretty good example of a car, don't you think? Done. That was technical, all right? Just so you know that. So, the car quits. Can't get it started. Tries everything he knows, can't get it going. So there he is, he's out there. All of a sudden, this big limousine pulls up. And he's looking at the limousine, and a, and a, and a gentleman gets out of the car, and he's got a nice suit on. And he walks over and he says, Sir, would you like me to take a look at your car? And, and the guy kind of, you know. It'd be like Dave, me going to Dave and say, Dave, you want me to build something for you? <laughs> right? So the guy kind of looked at him and was like, yeah, you know, sure, buddy, you go ahead, you can try, whatever. What's a guy in a suit going to know about fixing a car? And the guy gets in and he ties in a, a few of the wires and he, he taps on a few things and blows on this and hooks that up and unhooks this. Next thing you know, the car cranks right up. The guy looks at him and he says, man, this is amazing. He said, who are you? And the gentleman said to him, my name is Henry Ford. <laughs> you see, Henry Ford knew something about the car since he was the designer of the car. I'm promising you this. Your God knows something about what you need in your everyday life. Your God knows something about the strength that you need. Your God knows something about what it is that you need and don't need. Your God is able because He's the grand designer of you. Just give me Jesus. He made you. He knows you. He knows every hair upon your head. That might be a challenge for some, but not so much for a lot of you. Hair club for men, fellas. Come on. Listen, I say that. And my forehead grows every year. Every year, you know, I'm looking in, in, in the mirror and it just gets brighter and brighter. Man, I'm telling you, there's coming a day. And it's all right. It is there's coming. We, we are fighting so many battles. There's so many things that are going on in this world. Satan has got us so distracted. See, that's been his plan. You know, he didn't start out trying to, to get the Christians to totally denounce Jesus Christ. All he did was introduce sin into their life. And little by little and bit by bit, he's taken us away from Jesus. And he's wore us down. Listen, 2,000 years ago, there was a man that was born. And contrary to the laws of nature, this man didn't have an earthly father. He traveled extensively, but honestly, he only crossed the borders of the country he was, he was born in, I think, once or twice. In the infancy, he was intimidating to kings. They were trying to kill him as a baby because they knew there was something different about this boy. They were after him in childhood. If you remember, as a young man, he... He uh, astounded the very teachers and the, and the college professors of the day. In manhood, He walked across the waters. He was able to heal the sick, but He'd never been to school. He was not known as a doctor, but there was nothing that that man couldn't heal. He never 
studied psychiatry yet. He healed more far broken hearts than any of the psychiatrists far and near. He never wrote a book. He never composed a song. Yet he has furnished more books and songs and he's been more inspirational to any and every library in the world. You see, he knows something about how we fix where we are. He knows something about how we get from day to day. He knows something about struggles. He knows something about persecution. He knows something about giving all that He has for the people that He loves. He has set a great example for 22. All we need is Jesus. I'm going to keep saying it over and over and you keep shouting amen till we grab a hold of it. If I need to say it 20 times and keep you here to 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, I'll do that, so you better start speaking up. Amen. Now I got Nick on board. He don't want to be the last one to crack a barrel. Amen. Praise God. I'm going for Mexican food. I am so glad my stomach is better. Amen. You know, when I was at my sickest point, I hadn't eaten in two or three days, so I turned to the superfood. Now, don't they call it like blueberries? Aren't they like super... Uh, what do they call it? Yeah, but it's like a super fruit or something like that, isn't it? And that, they have super fruits, all right? Here, I'm going to give you my tech tip for foods for 2022. The super food, Spam. <laughs> I've been sick two or three days. My stomach was hurting so bad I couldn't hardly stand up straight. I was craving fried Spam something fierce. And I thought this will either cure it or it will kill me, amen. And into the cabinet I went and that Spam went into the plate and the grease and the oil. I didn't eat anything for two days after that. <laughs> Praise God. Super fruit. Super food. Listen. <laughs> I don't think God Himself knows what's in spam. Amen. <laughs> that stuff is, is great. I don't even know how to say it. I crave it all winter long. I don't know what is about that. It's hunting. I'm way off here. Let's dial it back in, all right? So uh, we went from a super food to a super savior. That's how we'll go. Amen. How about that? So we have a super savior that stands at the right hand of the Father. It's been seen by hundreds of people after He was crucified to the cross and laid in the grave. And we'll get to celebrate that here just in a few months at Easter. But now we're thinking about we need to proclaim. How do we move into 22? We proclaim the name of Jesus and we stand on that. And if we'll focus on Him, maybe we focus on the impact. I was I just enjoy reading stories throughout the week about once a, the Lord gives me a title and I start you know getting opportunities and just reading stories and and I, it just it gets my way of thinking focused. I read this this week. Socrates taught for forty years. Plato for fifty. Aristotle for forty. Jesus for thirty. Yet in that three years, he impacted more people than 130 years combined of all the other teachers. Jesus painted no pictures, yet some of the finest paintings of Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo da Vinci received their inspiration from Jesus. He never wrote any poetry, but scores of the world's greatest poets were inspired by Him. He never composed any music. I didn't know this. Beethoven and Bach received their highest perfection of melody in the music they composed in His praise. Just give me Jesus. Because He'll affect every area of your life. When Jesus shows up, things change. When Jesus shows up, we have a greater purpose. We have, a, we have peace that passes all understanding. We see some of the greatest Things happen around when Jesus is in the picture. For 2022, you want to live a victorious Christian life? Just give me Jesus. Says too simple, preacher. 
Nope, I never said it was going to be simple. And it's sure not going to be easy. But it is effective. You want to live in victory? It'll come through Him. It's not going to come through your pastor. It's not going to come through uh, a, 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 any, uh, anything else. You want to live a victorious Christian life. You want to see God work in a way. You want to be closer to the Lord Jesus than you ever have. You want it to go from religion to relationship. It's going to come out of this book and the writer. That's where it is. You say, Pastor, it can't be that easy. Like I said, it's not going to be easy. But I promise you this. The God that wrote this book, the God of this Bible, his Son, Jesus Christ, have never let me down. They never broke a promise. They never made promises that they couldn't keep. And remember this. I'm going to look here. I'm going to close for the first time with this story. I want you to think about Jesus for a minute. I read this story. I love it. I think I told it Wednesday, but I can't help it. i got to tell it again. There was a doctor who was a believer, a Christian doctor. He was talking with a Muslim teacher. And they were comparing Christianity and Muslim beliefs. So, the Christian, the Christian doctor, he said this, we believe that God has spoken to us in a book and it's called the Bible. The Muslim teacher said, we believe God has spoken to us in a book, and it's called the Quran." He said, okay. We believe that God visited this planet in the person of Jesus Christ. The Muslim teacher said, we believe that uh, God came to this earth through the prophet Muhammad. The Christian doctor said, well, we believe Jesus Christ died for His people. The Muslim teacher said, we believe that Muhammad died for his people. The Christian doctor then looked at him and said, we believe that Jesus proved His claim to who He was by coming back from the grave. Yep. Muslim's teacher said, we have no record of Muhammad coming back from the grave. Just give us Jesus. He separates us from everybody else because we serve a risen Savior. Our Jesus is alive and well. And I'll promise you this. He will love you like you've never been loved before. And He is waiting to move you forward with the gospel that He died for. Let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed.